Mr. Speaker, I rise in opposition to House Joint Resolution 68 and all of this afternoon's privileged resolutions on this matter. The International Emergency Economic Powers Act created a process by which the President could declare a national emergency, create sanction authorities for that emergency, and impose those sanctions on the malign actors that are causing the emergency in the first place. While I agree with my colleagues about the need for congressional oversight and modernization of presidential emergency powers, I strongly disagree with the process by which they are trying to force change. The national emergencies we are discussing today provide the legal basis for critical sanctions programs targeting some of the most evil people on earth. Although some of these authorities were enacted years ago, many sanctioned individuals continue to pose a clear and present danger to U.S. national security interests today. These ill-thought-out joint resolutions, by terminating these national emergencies, would immediately eliminate these sanctions programs without allowing adequate time for Congress or the executive branch to establish an alternative sanctioning authority. It would also unfreeze sanctioned individuals' assets, immediately putting millions of dollars into the hands of some of the world's most dangerous criminals. Even if a new authority were created, these monsters would not be automatically re-sanctioned. Each of the hundreds of sanctions designations at issue today was built on strong evidence compiled over months or even years. It is not a switch that can be flipped on or off. More time and a lot more taxpayer money would need to go into redoing the work that has already taken place to renew these sanctions. Another reason why this is a horrendous idea is that fines collected from violating terrorist-related sanctions largely goes towards the victims of state-sponsored terrorism fund, which provides critical compensation for American victims of state-sponsored terrorist attacks. Since the fund was established, it has paid out over $3 billion to eligible claimants, and by law, 50% of these distributions must be paid to 9-11-related claimants. 9-11 was the deadliest terror attack worldwide, and the attack has had a huge impact on the New York community in particular. Today, we still have cops, firefighters, first responders suffering from 9-11-related illnesses. The worst thing that we can do is take money away from 9-11 families and give it right back to terrorists. Again, while I understand my colleagues' desire to reform the national emergency process, empowering terrorists, corrupt officials, and war criminals is not the answer. And draining the fund that assists victims of terrorist attacks should be a crime in and of itself. We should address these issues directly through regular order rather than arbitrary, arbitrarily removing sanctions authorities that are essential to our national security. And I urge President Biden to engage with Congress on this instead of blatantly avoiding the topic. But now for the specific matter at hand. I strictly oppose House Joint Resolution 68, which would terminate the national emergency with respect to the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The forced termination of that emergency would lead to the rescission of sanctions and immediate release of millions of dollars to more than 60 currently sanctioned malicious foreign actors, including notorious arms dealer Viktor Boot, Russia's merchant of death, whose freedom Vladimir Putin demanded in exchange for American hostage Brittany Griner. This is the man you'd be helping by passing this joint resolution someone who was convicted of conspiracy to kill American citizens and officials, delivery of anti-aircraft missiles, and providing aid to a terrorist organization. It would empower this horrific individual and embolden the Kremlin either for, even further. Revoking this emergency would also impact our ability to fight the Islamic State affiliate in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Africa already represents the largest growth area of terrorism in the world, and Islamic State and Al-Qaeda affiliates fuel these groups' global networks. This resolution would make it easier for ISIS to use proxies in Africa to finance its terror operations. 
Further revoking the national emergency would release currently frozen money to individuals and groups who have perpetrated and profited from the ongoing deadly strife in Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo. Groups like the M23 group, the armed militia, primarily responsible for that bloody conflict. In recent months, international pressure on all parties has resulted in less offensive military action and violence in the Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo. This resolution could free up funds like groups, uh, that groups like M23 would immediately use to purchase advanced weaponry, worsening the humanitarian situation and destabilizing the region. I urge all of my colleagues to oppose this reckless resolution, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from New York.